Hey everybody. Hey guys, this is Shiloh with Glassweld. Saludos a todos. Bienvenidos a, al siguiente video de Glassweld and um, y, y gracias por acompañarnos. Thanks, thanks to everybody for joining us today. Um, if you're joining us, say hello. Let me know that you, you're with us. Um, today we wanted to try something new, something a little bit different. You probably noticed in the comments, uh, uh, the preface this video, that we wanted to try something a little more bilingual. We've had a lot of requests from many of our friends in Latin America and around the world in different Spanish-speaking countries for more content that um, that is understandable for them. So we, we really have been hearing that. So thank you guys for your patience. Um, and so today we're going to make an attempt to try to do that and maybe bring you some more content in the future in that regard as well. So um, gracias por acompañarnos hoy. Bienvenidos. Eh, por la primera vez eh, hoy haremos un video bilingüe. Uh, la meta es que hagamos más contenido para ustedes en Latinoamérica y otras partes del mundo donde hablan el, el español o el castellano y gracias por su paciencia. Um, no es muy fácil para mí hablar, hablar muy, el, muy bien el español, ni mucho menos hacerlo junto con un video técnico en inglés. Entonces estamos mirando la posibilidad de traerle más videos en español y eso va a ser la primera prueba. Um, so, so I wanted to, to uh, mention to you what the topic will be about today. Today we're going to be talking about the future of windshield repair. And so this is going to be important for you if you are either in the business. Obviously, it's important to you to know where the industry is going, where the sector is going. And if you're new to the business or you're looking at getting into the business, obviously, whenever you're looking at a business, you want to size up the opportunity and the market trends in order to know whether to invest and get involved. So the future of windshield repair is going to be our focus today and where that's all heading. Hey, Christopher, thanks for joining us, man. So. Um, El tema de hoy va a ser el futuro de la reparación de parabrisas, el futuro del sector. Es importante, si usted ya está en el sector, saber a dónde vamos. Claro, no, no, te, no podemos predecir el futuro en, con exactitud, pero tenemos algunos indicadores que nos ayudan a saber a dónde vamos en el sector. Es importante si ya estás en el sector o si estás mirando entrar en el sector, también es muy importante saber a dónde va el sector para saber si es una... Es una buena inversión para usted o su familia o, su, o sus socios de negocio. Entonces, eso va a ser el tema de hoy. So, uh, the first thing we want to talk about about when it comes to the future of windshield repair, and we've done a, top, a video on this in the past that was more specific, but that is about ADAS. Um, ADAS, it refers to the Advanced Drivers Assist Systems. And again, for those of you who are not fully familiar with the, what those are, I encourage you to Google it. Look it up. Look up some Google images. Look up some. There even some Facebook groups that focus on ADAS. Um, ADAS calibration. ADAS systems are in every aspect of your vehicle, but many of them are in it or around the windshield, and they control things like lane departure warnings, emergency braking, etc. Um, so that directly correlates to windshield repair and where the market is heading. So you need to educate yourself on ADAS. If you haven't already, you need to know what this is about. I'm going to get right back to this in a, se in a second to explain to you why that matters for the future of windshield repair. Um, el, primer, el primer tema sobre el futuro de la reparación de parabrisas es uh, los, lo que llamamos los sistemas ADAS. Eh, más o menos se traduce sistemas avanzados de asistencia para conductores. Si usted ya tiene un vehículo más o menos moderno de 2017 en a, a, adelante, pues ya sabes de algunos sistemas posiblemente que, que, que miden la distancia entre usted y su coche y el coche enfrente, en que te ayudan a frenar, que te ayudan a cambiar de, de pasillo uh, o a detectar otros coches a, a tu lado o enfrente. Son sistemas muy claves y van a ser en todos los coches, bueno, de hecho, de este año en adelante en Estados Unidos en, en muchos otros países. Uh, entonces, tiene mucho que ver con el futuro de, de, del sector de la reparación de parabrisas. Es importantísimo saber cuáles son estos sistemas y cómo se encajan con su sector o el sector a, a que tal vez estás mirando. So, uh, going back to the ADA subject, you know, obviously the biggest reason why ADAS matters for windshield repair is it is a complete game changer for the auto glass industry. 
I mean, what it has done is it has, it has taken an industry where you really only had to have some basic tools and some basic skills as well as, you know, access to windshields to do the work. Well, on modern vehicles now, especially as we get three to four or five years from now, where the bulk of the cars on the road will all have ADAS calibration systems uh, being standard from 2020 on in most in most places, um, you can imagine the the work to replace a windshield is now much more advanced. There's more equipment involved. There's more tools involved. There's more things that can go wrong. There's more expense involved. And so this sets up perfectly for growth in windshield repair. We're already seeing it um, across multiple different countries and multiple different markets that windshield repair is becoming a more viable option um, no matter where you are. Uh, so es importantísimo entender el, los sistemas de alas porque tienen que mucho que ver con el costo y la complicación de cambiar una parabrisa. En el pasado, con un, un cuchillo, un cold knife, podías cambiar un, una parabrisa y, y recolocar otro con, con el adhesivo correcto y ya, era todo. Pero ha cambiado todo con los sistemas de alas. Ya es, una, es, un, es un pedazo de tecnología donde si no lo recala, recalibras correctamente, eh, puede afectar la seguridad de los, de los habitantes de una manera muy grave. Entonces, es importantísimo que, que en el futuro, o, o ya en el presente, ya estamos en el, en el momento, pero en el futuro mucho más, que el, el que cambia parabrisas va a tener que reparar más. Y además, el costo, la complicación de, de hacer un, una, un cambio de parabrisa ha subido mucho porque ya, ya no puedes solamente sacarlo y ponerle otro. Tienes que recalibrar todo el sistema, lo cual encaja una inversión grande en sistemas, en máquinas para la recalibración, lo cual también implica costos más altos para los, para los aseguradores y también para, posiblemente para el cliente en el caso de un deducible. Entonces, todo eso conlleva un futuro brillante para la reparación porque es una opción donde no tienes que recalibrar, donde no tienes tanto costo, donde, donde no tienes eh, toda la, la, la inversión necesaria. Entonces, ya estamos mirando que el, el sector va por allá, que la reparación está llegando a ser más importante que nunca. OK, so, the, again, as we mentioned, the importance of ADAS calibration, how that's affecting our industry, we're already seeing it. Repair is becoming more and more crucial to insurance companies, to auto glass companies, because, uh, because of ADAS systems in part. Now, repair has always been important. It's always been about restoring the structural integrity. But when you can do repair a windshield and when you don't have to recalibrate it, you don't have to make an appointment at the dealership. You don't have to have all the correct boards to recalibrate it. I mean, the, the complication involved in recalibration right now is pretty extensive. Now, there are a lot of people getting into it. And I think many of them are doing it the right way, but it's expensive, it's complicated. There's all kinds of advanced equipment that is needed and advanced training that is needed to, to do it right. And the repair prevents for any of that from being necessary um, in many, many cases when it's possible. So um, it, all of this has set up to create sort of a groundswell of more repair, more demand for repair both by insurance companies as well as consumers. And as deductibles rise, consumers will demand higher, higher, you know, will demand repair. And of course, insurance companies are already looking to demand higher repair ratios because of the increased cost. Whereas what a windshield used to cost three or $400 to replace it, now it might be $1,000, $1,200 to replace because of the recal cost and the additional cost of the windshield itself. Entonces, es importante saber que el costo ha subido por lo menos dos veces, tal vez tres veces en algunos mercados, debido a la, la recalibración y además de la tecnología que está envuelta en la parabrisa. Um, uh, en muchos casos también los, los fabricantes de los coches están diciendo que no puedes poner un, una parabrisa que, no, que es aftermarket o que, que no sea de equipo original. Es, hay un debate sobre eso, pero el, el punto es de que el, el, toda la tecnología del sector va por allá. Entonces, está, está generando presión tanto en los clientes finales como para los aseguradores para reparar todo lo que es posible. Si usted es un técnico de reparación, eso, eso significa mucho más, mucho más trabajo para usted por el presente y también por el futuro. Entonces, es un buen señal para nuestro sector porque, digamos, hace, en cinco años que todos los carros en, el, en, el, en la carretera van a ser re, re, requerir Uh, la recalibración, lo cual 
siempre la reparación es una mejor opción debido al costo y la complicación, el tiempo, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera. All right, so there's just a few things to, to cover on this in addition to this. It's important to recognize that when you're speaking with your customers, talk to them about these things. Talk, educate them on what ADAS is. Educate them on how the repair prevents the original windshield from having to be replaced and therefore also from taking the unnecessary risk of having to recalibrate um, the entire system and unnecessary cost. Um, by doing all this, if you go back and look at one of our videos that talked about building value, you're going to build value for your service for repair because now it's, you're no longer just the guy who's coming out to inject something into their windshield. You're the guy who's educating them on the technology that, that many people don't even realize that they have right in their windshield um, and how your service is able to save them time and money and all kinds of hassle. So it's important to understand that because then you can communicate it in a way that your customers are going to care about. Entonces, es importante comprender eso porque necesitas comunicar eso a sus clientes. Que cuando llaman en el teléfono, ¿qué tipo de coche tiene usted? Oh, de, es de ese año. Por si usted ya sabe que tiene el sistema ADAS. Y van a decir, ¿qué es ADAS? Y usted luego empieza a explicar. Pues todo eso con, eh, te lleva a poder añadir valor a sus servicios para que cuando les digas el precio, ya no eres solo un técnico que, que repara para visa, sino un experto en el sector y simplemente van a, van a confiar más en, en usted o su servicio. Entonces, es importantísimo comprender estos sistemas, qué hacen y cómo, cómo se encajan. Si, está, si usted está educado, puedes educar a tu cliente y al mismo bien te puedes tener un precio más alto debido a, a la calidad de servicio que ofreces. Um, all of this is important to understand, too, because for, for, the, for the windshield repair industry, what this really means is that our prices need to be higher. You know, if you're still, and obviously this all depends. I mean, depending on what market in the world that you're in, we have customers all over the world. So I can't speak to specific prices. But what I can tell you is that, you know, the average in the U.S. market has for years and years and years been 45 to 65. Um, and that's just no longer really necessary. Uh, many of the insurance companies are paying $100 plus to certain vendors um, that do nationwide work for them to incentivize the repair. So. And, and many of your customers, once they understand what's involved, once they understand the deductibles involved, once they understand the technology that's involved, won't shy away from paying, you know, $80, $85, $100, especially in retail work. So consider raising your prices. I know many companies that have done this, uh, both on a nationwide scale and on a local scale. If you do it right, if you do it in a way where you're adding value, where you know your value, you're explaining that value in a way that your customer cares about, it's not going to impact your volume. It'll just increase your bottom line, which is really the goal. Again, if you're doing any service, if you can think of any specialist, a plumber, an electrician, anybody who, who does any specialized work that comes to your home or your business and does any work, do they ever show up and do something for less than $100 ever? So if not, then you know there's really no reason why the windshield repair industry needs to be any different. You are a specialist, or if you're considering getting into the business, you will become a specialist. And you need to charge your worth, understand your worth. And that worth is directly linked to understanding ADAS um, and what that's all about in the future of, of windshield repair. So, es importante comprender que eh, los precios no, no tienen que ser para muy bajos. Eh, ya cuando puedes explicar la, 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 el valor de tu servicio a tus clientes, por qué lo necesitan, por qué sus servicios son diferentes, y también explicar todos los sistemas de ADAS, pues, puedes subir sus precios a un, un precio razonable. En cualquier parte, parte del mundo donde estés, no existen especialistas que vienen a la casa y hagan un servicio especializado que solo hay unos pocos que sepan hacer, que cobran muy poco dinero. Entonces, eh, cobras tu valor, entiendas tu valor, que ya eres un experto que puedes por eh, 100 dólares, 50 dólares, ahorrar el costo de una parabrisa y una recalibración eh, y el, 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 las, los riesgos de recalibrar o de poner una parabrisa que no se encaja bien o que no está recalibrado bien, usted puede ahorrar todo eso con una reparación bien hecha. Um, one last thing kind of on this topic that I think is important to understand is that, you know, as, as the windshield become bigger and there's more technology in them and they become more of a piece, I mean, some of the technology that's coming, we're talking about augmented reality. I don't even know how to say that in Spanish, but I'm going to try. Augmented reality, things 
where you're where you're at some point in the future your windshield may even become somewhat of a touch screen so as you can imagine the quality of the repair as the windshield becomes something that people look at not just through will also become important so doing really quality work is really important of course that ties into your equipment that you're using the resins you're using and just the training that you have uh, es importante saber de que el, en el futuro de la, de, de la tecnología de las parabrisas encajan hasta que sea una, un pedazo de tecnología donde lo puedes tocar y mover ciertas cosas como algo que has visto en una película. A, a, es, esa tecnología ya existe y ya viene en los siguientes años. Entonces, la calidad de estas reparaciones va a ser importantísimo. Aquí así se encaja con la calidad de la, de la, del equipaje que tengas, de las resinas que usas también de la calidad de, de tu capacitación para que sepas muy bien hacer su trabajo y así puedes eh, puedes um, cobrar más y puedes también ser distintos en su mercado all right well i think that about covers it today um i wanted to give us one first shot at this at this bilingual session i hope it was helpful to you in some way i apologize to those of you uh, who are uh, spanish speakers if i made some mistakes in in my spanish but um, I want to ask you this too, as we finish up here, if you would like to hear more videos in Spanish, please let us know. Let us know in the comments. In addition, let us know that you have some certain subjects. If you have certain subjects you would like to learn more about. We are considering doing a whole series of videos more focused on, uh, on, uh, on sharing some of the knowledge that we've shared in English and Spanish as well. So let us know if that would be useful to you and what subjects you'd like to hear. Si gustaría aprender más en español, por favor, déjanos saber en los comentarios. Déjanos saber también qué cosas en particular gustaría saber. Uh, he, he visto que hay varios de ustedes que nos están acompañando. Espero de que nos dejan algunos mensajes y comentarios. Así estamos mirando la posibilidad de traerle más contenido más regularmente en español, que sea más dedicado para ustedes. Um, entonces, por favor, déjanos saber qué temas te interesan, qué temas desean aprender más. Um, y haremos todo lo posible para escuchar y, y traerle más información que sea, um, que sea de valor para, para usted. Pues muchas gracias por acompañarnos, que tengan una muy buena semana y esperamos sus comentarios, esperamos hablar con ustedes muy pronto. Salud de, de, de tu familia aquí en Glasswell. Estamos siempre pensando en ustedes todos los días en cómo podemos ayudar. Thank you everybody for joining us uh, from your family here at Glasswell. We think about you guys every day. Uh, and doing whatever we can reasonably to make uh, to make your jobs easier and to help you be successful out there. Hope you all go out and make some good money this week and uh, and enjoy the nice summer weather. We will talk to you all soon. Thanks everybody. Talk to you soon.